Hello, my dear friends. Today, we continue studying the diary of German Oberlieutenant Martin Stiglitz. Remember to rate this video and also leave your opinion about this material. Well, and we begin. January 28th, 1942. The day before yesterday, I was in the village of Bell, and as I did on my return from Finland, I gave a report to the 1st Battalion of the 376th Infantry Regiment, the men who had arrived here on the Junkers. I saw some terrible things. They had losses due to frostbite. This was partly due to the orders of our division commander. This man, Colonel Hernekamp, had already managed to become so unpopular. Well, I will keep it better in my memory, and I won't describe it here on paper. I shall only mention one thing. Our division should be commanded by an infantryman, not an artilleryman. The evening was spent in Penkovo. The regiment commander celebrated his birthday. We had a wonderful time together. Yesterday I moved further to Golovkovo, where the 2nd Battalion of the Airborne Regiment is located. I also gave a speech there. The way there, and I had to make it all the way on a sled, wasn't a pleasant walk. It was negative 32 degrees frost, with a strong easterly wind. I hope that I managed to share at least some of my experience with these new people in Russia, and then all of my road ordeals weren't in vain. During this journey, I gathered a lot of rumors. The rejuvenation of the army, and the forthcoming purges. People say a lot of promising things, especially in this unit. About the state of affairs, it's still precarious. Now, at most, we know only the state of affairs at the front of our division. All the rest of the information is not reported. Today, there were again the letters. In my section, by yesterday, the light weapons fire had eased a bit, but the shelling had intensified. Yesterday, we were first attacked with large caliber weapons, and this evening, the Russians opened fire on us with machine guns from a long distance. It doesn't make any sense at all. What are they hoping to achieve by doing this? Today, the soldiers of my company were awarded two Iron Crosses first class and 14 Iron Crosses second class. I have an excellent rapport with the battalion commander, Captain Scharf. What else? I have a slight cold, diarrhea, runny nose, general malaise. It affects my morale. Well, it'll be over soon. January 30th. The day of yesterday was generally quiet, as well as the day before yesterday. However, it should be mentioned that on the whole front, the Russians have activated their reconnaissance. So yesterday about 2 p.m., the reconnaissance group approached us, but fortunately managed to sneak away. About 8 p.m., they attempted again. One of them remained lying motionless. We probably managed to wound two others. When we examined the dead man, we found just an incredible amount of money, more than 2,100 rubles. That's rather unusual for a Red Army soldier. This guy had no insignia either. We found only some instructions with him. It's interesting to mention how this instruction, as well as all other Soviet instructions, was drawn up. Their authors assume a primitive level of education of the addressees, and they make real books in pictures, very accessible and understandable. We should make textbooks for recruits in this manner. Many of them are too complicated to comprehend. Today, these pigs are firing 17.2 centimeter caliber artillery at us. Not much pleasure, I'll tell you, when you have a wooden hut above your head. The day before yesterday, between you and me, we had our first letters in three weeks. The earliest mailing date was December 26th. That means there's a lot of letters still on the way. Yesterday, I was in the sauna. What a great thing it was to wash off all the accumulated dirt. Yesterday, we got the sad news. Hans Pent, commander of the 9th Company of the 27th Infantry Regiment, was killed the day before yesterday. He was shot in the head while briefing a fellow commander. What a pity to lose this never-depressed good guy. We were together with him back in Poland, and since that time we had warm, friendly, and camaraderie relations. This is a grievous loss to the entire officer corps, his comrades, his company, and his soldiers who always loved and appreciated him. February 1st, 1942 Already since 5 a.m., Penguin and I have been on our feet and around our front line. The day before yesterday, there was a speech by the Fuhrer. We heard some passages of his speech perfectly, but then the radio went into a continuous noise. Rommel must have really rattled those Tommies. The sappers were here yesterday, and they started planting tension mines. I hope the Soviets will fly sky high here. I write in my diary today only because it is the second month of 1942. Today is Sunday, and soon I think it will be the culmination of the Russian winter. Well, and then, woke to those Reds. Sunday. 
How many heart-wrenching memories are hidden in this word when you say it? What a pleasant emotion engulfed us on Sunday morning. Today we could sleep longer. The bells are ringing in the morning, summoning us to church service. And if you know these churches, you can even identify them. This is St. Barbara, and this is Mary Magdalene, and this is Luther, and this is the Cathedral St. Nicholas, and so forth. February 2nd. The Russian Air Force is very active this morning. They bomb the neighborhood of Mulvatitsi. The noise of battle is heard from there. This afternoon, these bastards opened artillery fire on us. They shoot only large caliber and with long pauses. It's disgusting. Everything so far without any unpleasant effects. All the shells fall near the village. Last night, when they were shelling Kushalevo, one soldier was killed and two others were badly wounded. We received the first woolen cloths from donations. In any case, it is a great success considering the difficulties of supplying our section. It is clear that nobody expected to fight in winter for such a long time. If only we had been properly uniformed as early as October-November, many of us would have managed to keep our bones unharmed. The rifle platoon of the 2nd Company 48th Regiment, which was under my command, was assigned to the 6th Company because the 1st Company 89th Regiment was withdrawn and the 2nd Company was reassigned from our section to Wayno. As a result, the entire 3rd Company is back together again. I was in the battalion yesterday evening. I played scat with Captain Scharf and Ludeman. There are some guys in the company I can only be happy for. Let's take, for example, Private F.G. Initially, it was a bit doubtful for me, and suddenly, he performs a feat. He was awarded the Iron Cross Second Class and was promoted to the rank of Gefreiter. However, there are many other conscientious and bold guys, but there are also potboilers. And what are they like? They're moral degenerates. And it's not that they do not know how. Oh no, they don't want to. This crowd has to be driven. They are eternal companions. Those who always try to stay a step behind during the attack. Those who come running at the very moment when the frontline soldiers have already broken into the enemy's position. They are the first to carry out the wounded. So they are being killed less often. These people are always inspired by the precept, Blessed are those who are deep in the rear, because someday they will see the motherland again. Fortunately, there are not many of them, and this is the fault of those who are engaged in training reservists in reserve battalions. They do not pay adequate attention to the education of moral and strong-willed qualities, focusing only on routine training in the skills of using weapons. February 4th. We are sitting with platoon commanders, talking, and suddenly there was an order, Oberlieutenant Steglitz to report to the battalion immediately. And there, take it, get the crap in a box. The Russians are attacking our forward positions along the main highway and strongholds on the section of von Duisburg with large forces. The 3rd Battalion is in big trouble. The order says one of the companies in Lanier should be ready at any moment to withdraw from its section and be moved to another section of the front. I've just given all the necessary orders. Everything has been set in motion. We will try to achieve the proper readiness. Now, in fact, it's not so cold at all. The sun is shining brightly. The nights are clear and visibility is good. February 5th The situation with yesterday's incident became clear pretty soon. By yesterday evening, so we remained in our former position. The 3rd Battalion was sending truly Cossack reports to the regimental command, an expression of Erich Ludendorff, a German general of World War I times, describing the shocking reports of their own huge losses. So, indeed, it couldn't help but feel that they had everything on fire there and I and all my company were glad that everything worked out as well as it could. This evening I played the card game Doppelkoff with the commander. We talked a lot and shared all sorts of stories. Lieutenant Colonel Kegler was promoted to the rank of colonel, something we are all very happy about. The Ivans, those fools, are now shooting at us with large-caliber guns. Non-commissioned officer Fuchs has arrived, but he's still in our supply wagon. The whole group from East Prussia has arrived with him, who organized to take our uniforms, which we had left there on the march. These things are still at Dano Station, though we don't really need them in our current situation. People who have returned from their leaves tell funny stories about the so-called rear services. It is long overdue to put them in order. It's getting colder, and the moon is shining at night. Unfortunately, the new moon is coming up again soon. It's not at all good because of way too good visibility at night. February 13th. Demyansk, Division Command Post. I thought for a long time, but then I reported to the commander. He immediately requested that I be given a vacation. 
Things were sorted out just fine. All the accompanying papers were already in my pocket. After spending the night at the command post of the division, the next morning I headed to our wagons at Ilyina Gora. From there, the next day I went back to the division. And suddenly, stop! The departure should be authorized by the division commander only. Why? So far, I could only talk to the second officer of the general staff. Hans Paul greeted me as a comrade, and all the officers are completely understanding. Nevertheless, the departure is constantly postponed. The reason? Colonel Kegler has suddenly been sent on leave. He will be substituted by Major Stupi. Recipient of the Knight's Cross from the 32nd Infantry Division. Kegler himself wrote a report objecting to this leave of absence. I'm not going to hide behind an imaginary disease, he said on the subject. Kegler quarreled with the division commander, Colonel Hernicamp, who was not liked in the troops because of the complete lack of infantry vein, as well as with Count Brockdorf, our general, nicknamed Count Standing Collar. Brockdorf strictly forbade sending me on leave also, and he didn't sign the report. And now I have to complete a training course in Berlin, and according to the divisional adjutant, my attendance is 100% guaranteed. I'm kind of dubious about it. The date of departure is unknown. Well, today I'll go to the regiment's command post. I'll see what happens there. That is all for today. You can watch other episodes of this diary by following the link in the pinned comment. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and support the channel by subscribing. Bye everyone, until next time.